Welcome to Equal Entertainment. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. A former contestant on The Bachelorette is confirming he is alive less than 24 hours after his death was announced. Josh Sider's verified Instagram page initially announced his death, even offering a message from family members. Josh Sider posted this video on his page Tuesday explaining what happened. Hey guys, as you can see, um, I am alive and well. Um, my account was hacked um, for the last 24 hours. I've been trying desperately to get into it. Um, somebody um, was playing a cruel joke and mocking my mental illness and the struggles I've gone through with depression and suicide attempts. And um, I'm sorry for all the pain they caused when they made that post. Um, I just got back into my account. Um, I am going to do all I can with my team to try to identify who is behind this. But again, I apologize for the confusion and um, I will update you guys as more facts come in. Thank you guys. Cider appeared on season 11 of The Bachelorette in 2015. Meta, the tech company that owns Instagram, has not responded to a request for comment and confirmation of the hack. Big names of late night television are coming together in a unique way to support the ongoing writer strike. Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, Seth Meyers, and John Oliver created a new limited podcast titled Strike Force 5. According to Spotify, the podcast will air once private chats between the late night hosts. The series will have at least 12 episodes, and each host will serve as a rotating moderator discussing the complexities behind the continuing Hollywood strikes. Proceeds generated from the podcast will go to out of work staff from all the hosts' late night shows. Actress Sarah Jessica Parker revealed on Instagram that she adopted the kitten featured in the Hit Max show, and just like that. She and her husband, actor Matthew Broderick, adopted the cat last April from the Humane Society. The cat is called Shu in the show, but Parker revealed its off-camera name is Lotus, and he has plenty of company at home. Parker and Broderick own two other cats. Shakira is being honored with the Video Vanguard Award at this year's VMAs. The Colombian superstar is also set to perform on MTV's Video Music Awards. Previous winners of the Video Vanguard have included David Bowie, The Beatles, Madonna, and Beyonce. The 46-year-old has also been nominated for Artist of the Year and Best Collaboration, as well as two nominations in the Best Latin Video category. The MTV Video Music Awards are set to air live on September 12th. CBS is honoring the late game show host Bob Barker with a primetime special. Drew Carey will host the tribute to his predecessor, a look back at his 50-year career in TV. Barker was the host of The Price is Right from 1972 to 2007. Before that, he hosted a show called Truth or Consequences. He died Saturday at the age of 99. Barbie is officially the highest grossing global release ever for Warner Brothers. Barbie beat out 2011's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. The Greta Gerwig movie has made a total of $1.3 billion, according to Comscore estimates. It's still not enough to crack the top 10 of all time. Most of those movie spots are taken up by Marvel, Star Wars, and Avatar. Maya Sharp has a new album out, her ninth since 1997, and it's called Reckless Thoughts. I recently got a chance to speak with the out musician about some key songs from the album and her transition from California to Tennessee. Yeah, well, you know, it, this album feels quite contemplative to me, uh, some of the songs especially, and uh, I wondered if it's also part of that time, you know, the pandemic of having just time to sit with one's thoughts and because yeah. uh, it felt that way to me listening to I, I know personally I've had some revelations about my life sure. you know, through isolation so I just wondered if yeah. that fed into any of your ability to kind of access uh, those parts of yourself absolutely uh the last album was all written pre-pandemic in fact it was all recorded pre. Uh, I waited to release it until it felt a little safer to do that. So that one was just kind of written from the swarm of everything. Um, this one, though, just as you said, this was uh, like from from the perspective of more on the other side of the storm. And that 
year of being forced to be alone with your thoughts a little more and, you know, just kind of work some stuff out. Um, that absolutely contributed to just kind of the general voice of this one. It's a little, it's a little more calm. It has a few of the answers that maybe the last album was asking. Um, yeah, it's definitely from a more kind of settled in viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder, would you talk a little bit about the song Old Dreams? I mm. really find this one to be, that, that one really resonates with me as someone looking back and thinking about my youthful dreams. And, <laughs> <laughs> and would you talk a little bit about the background on that one? It's it's really lovely. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that one really hits hard uh, for me um, as well. Garrison Starr and I... Uh, wrote that one. And that one was born actually like a lot of our songs together. That one started with us just kind of hanging out and talking about stuff. Like it was the end of the night. We didn't even think that we were going to be writing a song. Like she, she had been writing all day with somebody. I had been writing all day with somebody else. And this was just like our wind down half a bottle in, <laughs> Hey, you know, how's your life going? And we got on this thing about like, feeling ourselves sometimes having having a default reaction to something, being upset about something not happening mm -hmm. because it's the thing that we thought we wanted. Yeah. And we, we started to talk about making sure that we check ourselves that the thing that we think we want now um, isn't just because it's what we wanted when we were 25, you know, um, uh, you know, kind of let our dreams change with us and let them reflect, uh, you know, the new wisdom and the new life experience. Like y you probably don't want exactly the same things as you did when you first started this thing and didn't know anything because you couldn't yet. Right. Because you hadn't seen anything yet. So yeah. now, you know, so now at 52, uh, there are so many things that are happening in my life that I didn't even know existed, that I didn't even know I would want at that age. So it's actually, it's actually a beneficial thing mm. when I can remind myself, no, 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 no. <laughs> things might not be going how the 20 year old wanted them to go, yeah. but it's so much better than the 20 year old <laughs> could have ever known. You know, I'm so right. glad that my plan didn't happen because this <laughs> is so much better. <laughs> you can watch the Advocate channel live by downloading our app in the Apple or Google Play Store. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. For the Advocate channel, I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and thank you for watching.